Hello and welcome back to Pancast. In today's episode, we will be talking about broker VM capabilities and how it is implemented in Cortex XDR. We have a special guest today, Pooja, who will share more on this topic. Before we get started, Pooja, could you tell us more about yourself? Sure. Thanks, John. Hello, everyone. My name is Pooja, and I'm currently working as a team lead for the Cortex team. And today I'm really excited to share about broker VM capabilities with you in this episode of Pancast. Thank you, Pooja. Could you share with us the broker VM capabilities? Yeah, let me begin by introducing you to broker VM. The Palo Alto Networks broker is a secure virtual machine that is integrated with Cortex-XDR and serves as a link between your network and Cortex-XDR. By configuring the broker, you create a secure connection through which you can route your endpoints as well as collect and forward logs and files for analysis. The broker can be used to run multiple services in the VM using the same Palo Alto Networks authentication. Once installed, the broker receives automatic updates and enhancements from Cortex XDR, providing you with new capabilities without your intervention. This sounds great, Pooja. So how do we set this up? Uh, that's a good question. To set up the broker VM, you need to deploy an image created by Palo Alto Networks on your network or supported cloud infrastructure and activate the available applications. Additionally, to support larger environments, you can also set up the broker, multiple broker VMs for the same tenant. Is it a complicated process? Not at all. Well, setup can be done in an instant. Setting up the broker VM is extremely simple. After installing a broker VM image on the supported platform, you can simply generate a token and register it to the Cortex XDR console. Registration of the broker VM can take up to 30 seconds. And after a successful registration, Cortex XDR displays a notification. Following that, you can configure your broker VM settings such as IP address, gateway, subnet mask, DNS and NTP server, and so on. You can also configure a proxy and use your own broker VM certificate as the server certificate for endpoints. Well, you're now ready to begin using broker VM. It certainly does sound easy. Can you tell us more about the broker VM components? Absolutely. Let me tell you about the various broker VM components that can be configured based on your needs. The first component is local agent settings. You can configure the broker VM to act as a proxy that routes all traffic between the Cortex XTR management server and XTR agents via a centralized and controlled access point. When deploying Cortex XTR in restricted networks, where endpoints do not have a direct internet connection. This allows your agents to receive security policy updates and send logs and files to Cortex XDR without needing to connect to the internet. On Broker VM, you can also enable caching. You might wonder what is the point of caching? Well, you can cache XDR agent installations, upgrades, content updates on your BVM to reduce external network bandwidth load. Every 15 minutes, the broker VM retrieves the latest installers and content files from Cortex XDR and stores them for a 30-day retention period since an agent last requested them. If the files were not available on the broker VM when the request was made, the agent downloads them directly from the Cortex XTR server. The syslog collector is next on the list. Yeah, you heard that correctly. You can set up the syslog collector applet on a broker VM in your network to receive syslog data from an external source. Important point to take note here is ingesting logs and data from external sources requires a Cortex XTR proper TB license. Isn't that a plethora of features? This, however, is not it. There are many more features. Broker VM can also be configured as CSV collector, files and folder collector, FTP collector, NetFlow collector. 
Is that a little too much? Well, we are still left with a couple of important features. Did you know you can choose to activate the network mapper? The network mapper allows you to scan your network to detect and identify unmanaged hosts in your environment according to defined IP address range. Pathfinder is another highly recommended but optional component integrated with the broker VM that deploys a non-persistent data collector on network host servers and workstations that are not managed by a Cordex XTR agent. And when an alert is triggered, the data collector is able to run for up to two weeks, gathering EDR data from unmanaged host. You can track and manage the collector directly from the Cortex console and investigate the EDR data by running a query from the query center. And last but not the least, you can also activate the Windows Event Collector feature on Broker VM. To enable collection of the event logs, you need to configure and establish trust between the Windows Event Forwarding and Windows Event Collectors. Establishing trust between the WEF and the WEC is achieved by mutual authentication over TLS using server and client certificates. These are good use cases, Pooja. I hope our pancasters can take advantage of these capabilities. Could you please summarize what our key takeaways are for this episode? Yeah, to summarize, Broker VM can be used as local agent, Syslog collector, Apache Kafka collector, CSV collector, database collector, files and folder collector, NetFlow collector, network mapper, pathfinder, Windows event collector. So yeah, you can choose and decide based on your requirements. Thank you, Pooja, for your insights on Broker VM. We hope our pancasters will be able to leverage these features. You can find the episode's transcript and a ton of in-depth articles on this topic at live.paloaltonetworks.com under Pancast. Yeah, and thanks for having me and uh, hope to join you on another episode of Pancast. Pancasters, if you have other topics you need us to cover, please send in your feedback through the idea submission page on Live Community and we'll be happy to review them. Until next time.